So where we left off, I had some bullet wheels on the Mach 1 with drag radials on the back, and I was driving the car around a little bit like that, having some races, enjoying having full traction. I really liked it that way. So I do have some pictures of the Mach 1 with those bullet wheels on it that had the drag radials on. And so my brother and I would get together and go for cruises in the mornings, go drive around. And while I had the drag radials on, there were a couple more races that I won with the car. And I have this sheet. It's called the Kill List. And this is every car that I beat, and it's each car that I owned. You had the Mach 1 on the left, the bullet was the middle column, and then the Cobra on the right column. And this hangs in my garage now, and it's gotten up to about four pages long. You can see how on the Mach 1 column there's a couple pages worth, but the bullet in the middle that's where all the races happen because that's the car I raced more at the racetrack and daily drove and had more opportunity and stuff so you can see that it's almost comical how long the list is for the bullet compared to the other two the Mach 1's and the Cobra's and you know that's just because the Mach 1's and Cobra's don't get driven as much and I didn't daily drive them and I mean I did start picking up some with the other Mach 1's as I daily drove them but the reason why this picture is interesting is you see I'm adding the BMW Twin Turbo that I had raced and beat, but above it, it says 2010 Camaro SS. And the reason why that one's important is because we were down on the back roads, and we raced, and I got him. I had the drag radials on. I got ahead of him, and I was able to beat him through the quarter mile that was marked off. And as we were going through that quarter mile, um, I knew he'd be coming up quick. It was an LS3 Camaro, and I knew he was going to be catching up to me any second. And I was able to get there first, and then I let off the gas, and he continued to go. And as he ripped past me after the quarter mile to do, like, the flyby, he shot rocks all over the side of the mock. You know, not a ton of them, but you could hear a couple of rocks clinking off. And one of them hit right underneath the pony of the Mach 1 and took a little chip out of the paint so there's a rock chip underneath the pony on the passenger side of the uh, blue Mach 1 and that's basically a battle scar from winning a race so it's kind of an interesting story it's kind of cool to see the list of all the cars that I've kept track of that I've beat and stuff but this is one of my favorite pictures you can see my family and me out getting donuts on a Saturday morning and you see the Mach 1 in the background it's one of those cool classic pictures and I knew darn well when I took the picture that the Mach 1 was there in the background and I wanted it there because we'd take it out and have fun like that and my brother and I spent a lot of time going out in the mornings and we still do but this was at a car dealership in town and we went there and there wasn't really anything on the lot and it was early in the morning so we took some pictures and this is where obviously my brother had his Terminator first and it was making me want to get mine as well and so obviously the Terminator Cobra is the end all for the New Edge Mustang. It's the car to have. It's really awesome. But I still love the Mach 1 and I still enjoyed going out and driving around together even though I knew that my brother's car would smoke the Mach 1 in any type of a race you now that it has that Whipple supercharger and you know factory supercharged. It was fast enough anyway. So it's obviously the car that everybody wants and I think the Mach 1's live in the shadow of the Terminator Cobras because of that. If the Terminator Cobra didn't come out in 03 and 04 the way it did and the Mach 1 was the top of the line back then, I think it would have got a lot more praise. So my brother and I had gotten these Mustangs out for the morning to go up and drive around and take pictures and we ended up at the old airport. So this is a pretty cool picture. Shows a little bit of what the old airport was like. My brother and I spent a lot of our lives here. My parents owned a flight school across on the other side of the runway behind the Mach 1 in this picture. You can see there is still a hangar behind the Mach 1 on the other side of the runway there. And that building still stands, but this picture is actually taken on the cement pad that used to be a hangar. So there used to be a hangar where my car is parked in this picture and they put the gate up where the front of the hangar used to be and it used to point towards the runway towards the taxiway over there so this was a really nice hangar and it was somebody my parents knew who they had it and you could get to it from 
the road up to the airport. And this airport is actually on top of a bluff. It's on top of a mountain. So it was kind of interesting. It's like landing on an aircraft carrier. You come down and uh, when you fly, you're landing on top of a hill instead of down in the city. So these pictures are very familiar to me. This is what it always looked like flying with my parents and when I flew alone when I soloed at the age of 17 and my twin brother did as well. So if you look at this picture of the runway, this is heading north. On the right, there's a taxiway and some hangars and that's where these pictures are being taken. On the left, across on the other side is where my parents' hangars were and that's where you saw the earlier pictures of the Mach 1 in front of the hangars. So that's where this was and it's such a beautiful area. It's a great place to go hang out and so now that the airport had moved and it was all abandoned, my brother and I went up there on this nice morning and we parked on the old cement that used to be hangars and uh, just had a lot of fun taking pictures up there. It was nice to enjoy the morning and reminisce and remember that this is where we grew up and enjoying the nice sunrise and get the cars together and so there's some pretty cool pictures of the Mach 1 up here and you can see it has the stock wheels on it. Uh, these are some of the last pictures of it where it won't have the rear wheels upgrade that I do. But. So this is one of my favorite pictures of that day, the two Mustangs up with the scenery of the airport and background and the beautiful mountains and it was just a wonderful day. And so with nobody around and all that space, it was time to do a little burnout and my brother took some pictures of it. So this is me doing the burnout in the Mach 1. I don't remember if he had the video and these were clips from the video, but it was a pretty good tire smoking shot of the Mach 1 doing a burnout on that polished cement. So that's a pretty cool picture. I like that. It's fun to be up there and enjoying the day and having fun with the cars and playing around and goofing off. So there's the Mach 1 with the Project GT and the bullet in the garage. Mach 1 hitting 79,000 miles, almost 80,000 right there, just a click off of 80,000. And my wife and I took it up here to a wedding reception, and I had the keys on the nice table. And I went to take pictures of the Mach 1 on the way out, and she went out and photobombed my pictures because she was laughing that I'm always taking pictures of the car, and so she was getting in the way. And that was just her being funny, so we were laughing about that. The drive home from the wedding, this is just really close. It's only like 10 minutes out of town, but beautiful place to take pictures. I've always loved this view, and I always want to stop and take a picture, but it's kind of a, a quick moving highway but I made the effort to go ahead and get out and get those pictures and so Mach 1 back in the garage just driving around the neighborhood and taking pictures here and there and our friends decided we wanted to get together for our Facebook car club and get a big group picture of everybody so this is the picture of all of our muscle car friends that day and it was really fun to get together it took a lot of choreographing and communication to get this all set up. You wouldn't think it would be that big of a deal, but my brother and I even took several trips back into town to get friends' cars who couldn't make it that day or to get our duplicate cars, and so it took all day to get this picture. And this was a nice new road in town, and nobody really came there. There were a couple people who had taken cars on test drives from dealerships, and they got off on this desolate road to turn around and they came around the corner and saw all of our cars there and they had to turn around and go the other way so that was kind of funny but this is the overpass where the picture was taken from so this is while well, we were staging cars and moving them around we had them parked all underneath there but the picture was actually taken on top of that overpass and so we had a couple friends up there with some nice cameras and um, I had bought my wife a nice Canon Rebel T3i, I think is what it was, a DSLR camera. So we had some good pictures taken with those. So you have my friend's 04 Red Fire Mustang GT, my friend's 06 Dodge Charger Hemi, my friend's and brother-in-law's white Trans Am WS6, I believe it was a 99 or 2000. He put the anniversary stripes on it that the 99 would have. So this is what the 30th anniversary Trans Am was supposed to look like. It had blue wheels from the factory, blue stripes, white seats, and even a 30th badge on the door. 
and the WS6 badge on the back was blue and he bought all the badges and everything but he didn't have the wheels or the interior so it was definitely a replica but that's what he was going for. And then of course my brother's Screaming Yellow 04 Terminator Cobra and my blue Mach 1 and my friends at the time Red Fire 03 Mustang GT and this is the car that was wrecked and I bought it from him and I started to part it out but then I decided to save it and my sister ended up having it for several years and I've still kept up with the person who bought it from her so that's that GT. Then you have my younger brother's Ellis 1 Camaro, my brother's Red Mach 1 03, my 2001 True Blue Bullet, a friend's Hemi Charger, and then the silver 2000 Mustang GT that at the time was a Kenny Bell supercharged MMR engine car, and that later went on to be a turbo nitrous car. I have a whole story about that car as well. Canary Yellow 95 Mustang GT, and the owner of this car would end up selling it and getting a black uh, 2000 Mustang GT and then selling that and getting a red 04 Mach 1 and a black 01 Bullet. Then you have my 97 Laser Red Mustang V6, which at this time I had sold it to my younger sister, so she was driving it around and enjoying it. Then my friend's silver Trans Am WS6, which had a built LS3 engine in it, cam, full exhaust, everything done to it. It made 526 to the wheels, naturally aspirated. Then you have my friend's blue Mach 1. I have a story about this car on the channel as well. It has black FR500s and headers and Flowmaster exhaust. And then our friend's 2013 Grabber Blue V6. My other friend's Pontiac Pace car, Trans Am, and he had found this in a field somewhere and rebuilt it, repainted it. And he did all that in high school, and then he ended up selling the car at Barrett Jackson. And then you had a V6 Zinc Yellow 03 Mustangs. It might have even been a pony package car. It had the GT hood scoop on it. It looked really good. And a first generation Mustang 64 to 66, 289. Red 03 Mach 1, and my brother drove this one that day. I remember we went and picked it up for him because he couldn't be there. I have a story about this car on the channel as well, it belonged to a friend. And then my other friend's 04 Torch Red Mach 1, beautiful car, it had like 50,000 miles on it, very nice shape. It had black bullet wheels with deep dish in the rear and it was lowered, had a lot of work done to it. And I have a story about this car on the channel as well. And then you have my little sister's black 98 Mustang V6. So like they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> this one definitely was probably worth more than that as we're talking about each of these cars and the fun time we had. And this was a very fun day. We had some fooling around and donuts and, you know, burnouts and stuff. So that's my blue bullet and my friend's blue Mach 1 at the same time doing that. Now the cool thing about this day as well was we got my Mustangs and my brother's Mustangs lined up at the time and we decided to go ahead and take some pictures of them like this and send them into 5.0 Mustang Magazine. And we were able to uh, get the shot like this and this is my brother and me, that's him on the left, me on the right. It was just a fun day for the two of us to get together with our Mustang collection. And this is the picture that made it into 5.0 Mustang Magazine. It was in the back section on readers rides or something like that so that was fun and I had submitted that and I didn't even know about it and I was out on the back roads with some friends racing and one of them said hey you're that guy in the Mustang magazine <laughs> and I was like what are you talking about and he said yeah I was at Walmart looking at 5.0 Mustang magazine and I was looking through and I looked at the back and I saw you and your brother with your Mustangs all lined up and I didn't know that that had happened so the blue bullet, the blue Mach 1, my brother's red Mach 1 and his yellow Terminator were the cars that were featured at that time and so these are the cars we owned at the time I did not have my Terminators or my other Mach 1's or anything yet or any of the GT's of course so this was the picture of our Mustang collection at the time so it was fun to go out there and take all these pictures together and hang out and be together and you know, like I said it was kind of some work to get the cars all out there we had to take several trips and 
I remember we went and got lunch that day as we were shuttling cars and we got all the way out there and opened up the bag and we were short a couple items and we were hungry and we went back and my sister always laughs at the story because I went with her and uh, we went back to the drive through and they apologized and I just smiled and said is there something you could do to you know make up for that <laughs> and they were like oh what do you want I said how about a vanilla milkshake and they said okay sure and she always laughs about it and that was that day and I don't know if you caught it, but in this picture that I showed earlier, you can see a little pair of flip-flops because that belonged to my little boy. So we had to retake the picture because his flip-flops were in there. And we did have a lot of these people who came that day bring their kids, and their kids were all hanging out on the sidewalk and playing with Hot Wheels cars and stuff. So it was a fun get-together. So we would meet up with other friends, that's my other friends, Red Mock one there, and go to gas stations, meet up early on, uh, Saturday mornings again and get all the cars together and go for a fun cruise in the desert. So that's one of our favorite places to go. Very beautiful scenery, nice new road, fun to be out there with the cars. It made owning the cars just so worthwhile. It's so fun to get together with friends and we always go to this parking lot, meet up and stuff. But those are kind of the end of the pictures of the Blue Mach 1 with its original wheels and original ride height because at this point, as you can see, there's a FedEx truck here dropping something off and that's the surprise for the next video. You probably could guess what it is if you're really into these cars and you've seen my other videos of my Blue Mach 1. But this was a big upgrade that I'm very grateful that I got for the car. So stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more Mustang content.